Praise the Lord, First Missionary Baptist. Praise the Lord. This morning, as we begin to worship with not only our bodies, but our minds and our souls, I'm going to ask you to do something a little different. Would you take a moment to close your eyes? And I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath a nice inhale, and as you exhale, I ask you to quietly say the name Jesus. I'm going to ask you to inhale one more time, and as you exhale, just a little louder, say the name Jesus. And for this third time, a deep breath in, and as you exhale a little louder, the name Jesus. I ask that you reflect on what Jesus has been to you, whether it's being your savior, which we all call him, your doctor, your lawyer, for some, your mother, for others, your father, for many, your friend, I ask that we reflect on what Jesus has truly been to us and what he is to us now. As we open our eyes collectively, I ask that we all cry out loud, the name Jesus. Jesus. There's no other name like the name Jesus.
I was going to give you a, I was going to say if you didn't do it right, I, I had a 20-minute welcome. So, uh, but since you did it, I'll do a, a short one. But um, on behalf of uh, our pastor, Don Darius Butler, I welcome you to First Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, for those that's present here in the sanctuary, those in TV land, and other media, uh, we especially welcome the first-time visitors. We believe that if you're a first-time visitor, that you're here for a reason, and that we pray that you receive what you, um, that you need, whether it's through song, scripture, prayer, or the word. So I grew up in a church that we always opened the call to worship with, with this saying. It said, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be stoic. You could get up and say hallelujah or shout amen or whatever. You know, so, you know, so come to worship the way, you know, God leads you to. All right, and at this time, we're going to ask you to uh, stand for our call to worship. Okay. As we gather in this house of the Lord, let us turn our eyes upon the one who provides not just silver and gold, but the riches of faith, hope, and love. Today, we may receive more than we expect. May the words of Peter echo in our hearts. What I have, what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. We come with wonder and amazement, for the Lord has made our feet and ankles strong. He has healed our infirmities and filled us with his spirit. Let this time of worship be a testament to his power as we recognize the work of the Almighty in our lives. Okay. Please remain standing as we continue the service with the uh, prayer uh, invocation. Good morning. Good morning. You know, this time last week, we were all preparing for the eclipse, right? And we were all trying to get our glasses so we can see this marvelous thing that was happening on this past Monday. But there's going to be another time, right? And we're all going to look up. We're going to hear a trumpet. And he's coming out of the clouds. Amen. All right now. But we don't know when. But as Christians, we need to keep watch. Be on guard, watching and praying. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we come before you today with grateful hearts. Grateful to be gathered in this place to magnify your name and to worship you. We don't take getting up in our right minds with moving limbs for granted. Thank you, Lord. We invite you in this place, O oh Lord, to move about the rows and aisles, removing any distractions from yesterday and worry about tomorrow to worship you through fellowship song and your shepherd pastor butler speak to us lord for your servants are listening as we acknowledge the contributions of the senior usher ministry we pray that you will continue to give all ushers the strength temperament and physical stamina to serve as your doorkeepers let our light so shine to all we come in contact with and help us to greet and seat worshipers with a sweet smile and a helpful spirit in worship to you. In your name we pray and give thanks. Amen.
Good morning, First Baptist. Praise the Lord. God is worthy to be praised. Listen, I don't know if you had a week like I did, but this week was a week. Anybody have a week for sure? But when I come into God's presence, it releases all the stress that happened in the week. And this week I'm doing, uh, this past week I did a study of the, I'm doing a study of the book of Psalms and I was in Psalm chapter 27 and can I just read to you all just a few verses that stood out to me as we go into this time of worship. Verse 4 of 27 says, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And then dropping down to verse 14, it says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Listen, that thing stuck with me this week because sometimes we get real discouraged in the wait. But when we wait on God and we are of good courage, he begins to strengthen our hearts. And because of that strength, we can worship God. Anybody want to praise God today? Listen, I'm learning that there are only two times to praise him. When you feel like it and even when you don't. It's time for us to stop allowing our circumstances to dictate our worship to God. Somebody better open up their mouth and begin to worship a God who's God all by himself. He really doesn't need your help, but because he dwells in the midst of your worship, you might as well give him a praise. Come on, I'm tired. I'm tired of us playing church. It's time to worship a redeeming Savior, a living Savior, a God Savior. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. We love him. Anybody love him today? Anybody love him today? Come on, as we sing this song, oh, how I love Jesus. Listen, do you know that even in your unlovable self, he loves you? Even in the midst of un your unrighteousness, he loves you. Oh, how I love Jesus. Why? Because he first loved me. When I didn't want to love him, he loved me. Maybe you've not been like I've been, but there have been times when I didn't want to love him, but he still loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Can we just lift this song up this morning? Come on, let's sing. There is a name I love to hear. There is a name I love. To I love to hear. sing its words. Come on, do you really love him? Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, tell him why. Because he first loved me. Verse 2 says, it tells me of a Savior's love. Who died to set me free. It tells me of a Savior's love. Oh, how I love Jesus. 
Verse 3, it tells me what my father has in store for every day. And though I tread a gloomy path, he'll sunshine all the way. Come on, read. Come on, you know it by now. Come on, ring it out, singing, oh. oh how I love Come on, sing, oh. oh how I love Come on, all over the building, oh. oh how I love Come on, because. Come on, let's do it again, everyone. Oh, how I love Jesus. Did you know that if you were the only person on this earth, he would have left the portals of glory just for you. Come on, give him an audible praise. He loves you. He loves you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And because we love you, we love to call your name. Anybody love to call the name Jesus? Can we just rehearse that? Jesus. 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 Master. Savior. Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. This is the atmosphere of praise. Jesus. 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 Chains are broken when we mention that name. Jesus. Lives are restored when we mention that name, Jesus. Families are healed when we mention that name, Jesus. 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 The song says we love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. Can you sing this song with us? Sing it till we, till we get it. Can you sing it with us? We love to call your name. Come on, Andy, come on. We can still worship. We can still worship. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name call your name is some we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great we love to call your It's something we cannot explain That happens when we 
proclaim your great name. Your great name. Come on. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim. Your great name, your great name, King Jesus, no other, King Jesus, no stronger, we can call on King James, when we call on your name, let's take it back to the top, we love, we love to call your, call your name, it's something, Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Somebody better call his name. Somebody better call his name. Somebody better call his name. His name is high above every name. His name is high above every name. Call his name. Call his name. Call his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call you Jesus. We call you Jesus. We call you Jesus. Not Mohammed. Not Krishna. Not Buddha. We call you Jesus. We call you Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I call your name, things have to change. When I call your name, there is power. When I call your name, we call you Jesus. We declare you to be Jesus. Your Lord over my life. I don't know who he is in your life, but he's Lord over my life. And here's what I've decreed and declared. Never will a rock cry out in my place. I call you Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 my healer, Jesus, my deliverer, Jesus, my keeper, Jesus, he's the keeper of my head, he's the lifter of my soul, he's my bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty, he's Jesus. We call his name. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, bless you, bless you.
Well, good morning, church family. Well, it's offering time. A time to reflect on the goodness and mercy of God and to respond with gratitude. What is gratitude? Gratitude is the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for, and to return kindness. Quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation, and to return kindness. What better way to show gratitude today than to bless the Lord through the giving of the tithe and the offering? And here at First Missionary Baptist Church, there are several ways to give. You may give online via RIM or Giveify. You may give by texting FMBC RSV, any amount, to 73256. You may give by paper check or cash by putting it in the envelope and placing it, placing it in the offering tray at the appropriate time. You may send your offering via U.S. mail to First Missionary Baptist Church, 3509 Blue Spring Road, Huntsville, Alabama, 35810. Or you may bring your offering to the church office during regular office hours. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we have come to a point in this worship experience to give unto you the gift of the tithe and the offering. You said in your word, let each man give what he has purpose in his heart to give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for you love a cheerful giver. And Father, you Father reminded us that he who soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, but he who soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. But let us be ever so reminded that you're not a God in need of a social handout. But you said in your word that for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and everything that it was in. So Father, we just come thanking you for the privilege of stewardship. We thank you that you allowed us to be temporary managers of those things that belong to you. And Lord, we pray now that these tithes and these offerings will be used to promote the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you now for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Amen. Oh, 
Here's what's happening here at FMBC. Join us in celebrating our amazing senior ushers today. Let's show our appreciation for their dedication, warmth, and service. They light up our days and make our gatherings special. Thank you, senior ushers, for all that you do. Hey, high school students, ready to turn your dreams into reality? Don't miss out on a chance to secure an FMBC scholarship. Scan the QR code or head to fmbc.org, click on Member Resources, and apply today. Your future awaits. Want your graduation photo to shine in the June Communicator? Submit your photos to fmbchuntsville at gmail.com and let us celebrate your success with the FMBC community. You're invited to join us for our fifth Pastor and People celebration as we say thank you to our first family, Pastor Don Darius Butler, First Lady Lakeisha, along with Dahlia and DJ on Sunday, April 28th. You are encouraged to wear pastel colors and ladies, please wear your church hats. Reverend Claibon Lee will challenge us through the preach word as we celebrate the man of God placed at FMBC. Let's say thank you with our lips and our gifts. Gift envelopes can be received from the Usher Ministry. See you April 28th. Pastor, people, pastels, and the preached word. What a time it will be. Stay in the know and follow us on social media or check out the website at fmbc.org. You can also pick up a copy of the communicator. Have a great day. And that's what's happening here at FMBC. stand together as we take our concerns to the Lord in prayer today. As we ask God to meet us at our points of need. Um, I would uh, that some of our deacons would come and stand for Brother Little Page and for his family. And some would come and stand for Pastor Emeritus Scruggs, who is still in hospital today. We pray for him. And we pray for Mary Turner. We pray for Sister Cornell Phillips. For Sister Laura Chalk. We pray for Sister Linda Figpin and Brother Jacob Savage. We pray for the family of Brother Joseph Hobson, whom we funeralized on Thursday. We're praying for Sister Sadie Davis, who buried her brother in Washington State yesterday. Brother Andre and Sister Jolanda Harris, we pray for them as they buried a nephew in Lawrenceville, Georgia on Friday. We pray for Sister Bobby Scott as she buried a cousin in Memphis. We 
pray for uh, Tiffany Byron, who buried an uncle in Bessemer yesterday. For Anne Debrow and her family, as they've buried a cousin in Boykins. For Tammy Dawkins Hill, whose grandfather has died. Sister Joyce Gaston, whose mother died and will be funeralized in Arkansas later this week. We pray for Deacon Melvin McCann and his family, the death of his uncle. We pray for Sister Sarah Drake, the death of her nephew. We pray for the family of Sister Diane Cuts Oates, who died yesterday. Her brother Charles Matthews, Jimmy and Carlos Leslie, Kendra Smith, Jaquise, their entire family, we pray for them. We pray for our senior ushers who serve faithfully in the life of this congregation. God. There are moments when our words fail us. But it does not negate your spirit who searches the deep things. It does not restrain your ability to discern and to detect all the difficulties of our lives. So even when we cannot articulate it, we simply say, Lord, have mercy. When it's too heavy, too cumbersome, too troublous, Lord have mercy when it's been with us too long and the night has been too dark Lord have mercy when it seems there is no way out of it even after we've cried for deliverance Lord have mercy when the prescription medications do not do what they were supposed to and our bodies are not responding to the chemotherapy Lord have mercy when the fractured lines have gone to the depth of our souls and we are struggling simply to keep our heads above water. Lord, have mercy. When the report is so bleak that it does not appear there will be a shaft of light. Lord, Lord, have mercy. The truth is, God, we come clinging to mercy today because that's what we need. Fallen with failure, fractured, we need your power. We need your strength. We need your might. We need your upholding grace. We need your sustaining strength like none other can provide. So God, we ask in the prayers of the saints of old, come by here, my Lord. Somebody needs you, Lord. Someone's problem and their plight, their plea, their, their predicament has been nagging them incessantly. Somebody needs you, Lord. 
And they may appear to be adorned smartly, beautifully dressed, but deep down beyond all that they have accessorized, they need you. So God, come and see about us. See about us in our sorrow, in our suffering. See about us in our brokenness. See about us in our affliction, God. See about us in our grief. The truth is we've come today because we know if you come see about us, you can make everything all right. We've come today because we need hope and inspiration. We need you to lift up our bow down heads. We need you to put a new song in our mouth. We need you to put and restore some joy in our hearts to give us merriment and laughter and contentment. God, we need you to whisper in our ear, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. And for those who have come, God, at the end of their rope, God, tie a knot on it. And give them enough grace to hold on. And even if they let go, God, because you got us in your hands, nobody can pluck us out. We'll be safe and we'll be secured. We'll be sheltered and we will be had steadfast because we are in your will. And for this, God, we give you thanks and praise and glory and honor and adoration. God, we thank you for being a mighty good God. We thank you, God, for being faithful and kind and compassionate and gracious and forgiving and long-suffering. Thank you, God for ordering our steps, for preserving our mind and keeping our hearts. Thank you, God, for bringing us to this place and for giving us what we could not give ourselves. God, we say thank you. Now keep us in your care. Keep us in your will. These, your servants whose names we've called, look in on them with special attention give them hope grant them courage that they might look to the hills from whence cometh their help and oh God despite the long night we look toward the morning <laughs> praise his name we look toward the morning when everything shall be alright in the name of Jesus the sweet name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the sufficient name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the strong name of Jesus, in his name we pray because our names cannot get it done. And if you know the power of that name, go and whisper it right now. Go on, if, go on, whisper it right now. Come on, if you know the name, whisper it right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, let the church say amen.
something about that name. Something about the name Jesus. Something about that name. Something about the name Jesus. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a hand praise. 
Let's give him a hand praise because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. so sweet. See, we had to sing this a good, because that's just how sweet God is. You can't say this one time. God is sweet. You know he's sweet. Oh, yes, you know how to call on him. You may not call on him now, but I know you call on him, because that name is so sweet, Brother Ogle. That name is sweet. God can take care of all your needs. That's why we trust him. That's why we trust God, because he can do it all. Man cannot do it. It's the sweetest thing. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. have done that without Jesus. I want to let you know. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. That was Jesus. Oh, that was Jesus. That wasn't nobody but Jesus. I did that two times. Woo! He is so sweet. Yes, he is. He is the sweetest man. Shoo, doo, doo, doo. the sweetest name I know praise his name yes Lord thank you thank you brothers thank you for that melodious sound praise his name amen 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 Yes, Lord. If, if you are a guest, if you're a guest and you're worshiping with us this morning, would you stand, please, all of the guests who worship with us today? God be praised. God be praised. Remain standing just a bit. Amen. Amen. Now, the members who are near them, come on, reach your hands out and shake their hands. Give them a hug. Embrace them. Welcome them to worship. Thank them for coming, for being a part of this experience. Amen. Amen. Welcome them. And then pray now that the Lord might speak to their souls so that their coming would not be in vain. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Amen. Those who are celebrating your birthdays um, today or over the last week, would you stand? All the birthday celebrants. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Remain standing. God bless you. God bless you richly. God bless you abundantly. May God bless you even to your amazement and surprise. Know how special you are to him and how special you are to us. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Acts chapter 3.
I have just a few more uh, installments of this series that focus on the life of Peter and his ministry, and this is um, an important uh, remembrance of Peter's ministry. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him as did John and said look at us and he fixed his attention on them expecting to receive something from them Peter said I have no silver or gold but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth stand up and walk and he took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong Jumping up, he stood up and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit I said he used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. I want you to see verse 4 focus in on it. Peter looked intently at him as did John and said look at us Peter looked intently at him looking with the eyes of Jesus I hope, I hope over these weeks you have gotten some deeper sense of what is maturing in Peter's life and in his ministry as he has not just been following Jesus but now has assumed his role as a leader in the Lord's church. When we began this series, we all chuckled to ourselves about the Peter in us. We, we all snickered a little bit about his reckless speech sometimes 
is cussing. It all tickled us because, you know, every now and then, yeah. We all identified with how Peter in one minute can have a great revelation and in the next he could stand as a stumbling stone. And it's always easy to be the critic of other people's misbehavior. It's always easy to be able to sum someone else's actions up but it's harder to hold the mirror up to your own face. When you hold the mirror up to your own face, you can see what you and I have become. God, through Jesus, is more compassionate, more patient, and more suffering with Peter as he is with us in that at the moment that Peter stands as an impediment to the will of God he is not written off even at the moment when Peter denies Jesus three times he's not done if anything last week we discovered how the resurrection provides restorative grace for us that bids you and I to participate in the movement and the rhythm of God in the world even by our very own standards we do not qualify. If we tell the truth, if someone else were keeping score about us like we are keeping score about them, we would have been summarily disqualified. Yeah. If someone else had been as critical about us as we are about another, it would not have even shown up here today. But Acts chapter 3 is evidence of God's ability to rehab us yeah it's, it's the evidence of God's ability to restore us and to make of our lives something more than we could discern and detect in our present moment Jesus does not leave Peter by the seashore I've moved ahead some weeks in the liturgical cycle that passes the day of the ascension where Jesus is taken up from them after a conversation with his disciples and Peter inquires of Jesus is this the time that the kingdom of the father shall be restored and Jesus says to Peter slow your roll it's not for you to know what's in the keeping of God it's in God's own timing to make it happen I want you to read Acts chapter 1 closely I'm going to come back to it in the weeks to come because there's something to say about this Christian nationalist agenda that's emerging in America that I think we need to really be corrected about but Jesus is trying to say to Peter I don't want you to think about the kingdom of God in terms of your national identity. I need you to understand that the will of God cannot be contained by any border or boundary. And for that matter, it cannot be exhausted by any denomination or any local parochial identity. God is too big just to be Baptist. That's right. Too big, too grand to be contained in the restricting and limiting ways 
that we are comfortable commanding God to show up. And on the day of Pentecost, God shows how global God is in God's reach and God's perspective. In that gathered there in Jerusalem were devout Jews of all ethnicities. And they came from Phrygia and Pamphylia. They were Medes and Cretans and Arabs and some were had Roman identity. I, I mean they were from all over Mesopotamia and they wondered what happened. These unlearned men from Galilee, they didn't go to Normals Hill. They didn't study at Alabama Agriculture and Al Mechanical University. They didn't get their degree from Tuskegee. They didn't go to the University of Alabama. They didn't go to Alabama State. And yet they could speak languages for which they never studied. The United Nations had not yet been formed. And still God was translating God's message in languages that these folks had never studied. And Peter says, don't think that they are drunk with that ignorant oil. No, this is what was prophesied by the prophet of old in the last Days, I'll pour out my spirit on male flesh, white flesh, straight flesh, American flesh, all flesh. Your sons and your daughters. <laughs> Don't just say amen with sons. Your sons. Say amen. And your daughters. Amen. That's right. Let, let's try it one more time. Your sons Amen. and your daughters. Amen. Amen. We got it today. Shall prophesy. Yeah. <laughs> your, your young men and your old men. Yeah. No, God is not going to be circumscribed by your reaching the age of full entitlement of social security. You don't get to retire in the kingdom of God. Your young men and your old men. Come on, let's do it one more time. Your young men. That's those of us who look the way we look. But then those who have been on the battlefield a long time, you don't need to sit on the sidelines. He says, I've got something for you to do too. Your old men. Yes. Shall participate in the purposes of God. He preached so compellingly that day that when the door of the church was opened, the mega church was formed. 3,000 souls came and gave themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, preaching has got to be put into practice. You should have said amen right there. I came with an extra bag of them. I'm going to lend them to you this morning. Right? You, 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 preaching has got to be put into practice. And, and on the heels of this great intake into the church, Peter and John are now going to the temple for a time of prayer. I don't want you to be anachronistic. They weren't going to the church house. They were going to the temple. They were going to a place that was familiar to the religion of Judaism that had appointed times of prayer in their daily life. And on their way to their prayer place, they encounter a man who had been lame from his birth. He didn't get there on his own. Some folks brought him there. <laughs> now you could pause right there and dispel everyone who thinks that we have somehow advanced on our own ingenuity. Examine your record. Tell the whole testimony. And you'll have to admit somebody 
helped you along the way. It takes nothing from us to admit we have been assisted. It makes us no less a success than to freely confess were it not for the aid and support of someone who whispered your name in a room you were not in. Someone who passed along an assignment that they knew was better suited for you. Someone who gave you a shot against the word that was out on you and gave you an opportunity and you stepped into the stream of purpose at the right time. And because you stepped in at the right time, serendipity met with the providence of God and the rest is history. But don't forget the precipitating event that got it all started. Somebody did it on your behalf. Now can I give you seven good seconds to open your mouth right now and thank God for somebody who helped you along the journey. Can, can, can I give you a moment to thank God? Whether big mama, whether a praying grandmama, whether a sacrificing daddy, whether a praying deacon, somebody along your journey got you to the place Yes. They're going to pray. They're going to praise. But before they get to the place of prayer and praise, they are confronted with pain and suffering and sickness and affliction. They are confronted with pain and suffering and sorrow and affliction. Unlike John chapter 9, the passage I used yesterday to eulogize Deaconess Harriet Littlepage, the theological categories of cause and effect have been collapsed. Maybe it's because Jesus had confronted them sufficiently about it. When the disciples were walking with Jesus one day during his ministry, they came along a man who had been blind from his birth. And because they were walking with outdated theological categories, they started to surmise someone is at fault. Was it this man's mama or his daddy? Was it the man himself who had offended God so deeply that he should be cursed in this way, eking his way through life, seeking the aid, the benevolence, the charitable philanthropy of other people to simply exist? Jesus says to them, no, you, you, you need an updated theological vernacular. Every now and then, I'm going to be an Apple evangelist. Every now and then, Apple products will send you a note that you need an upgrade. Glitches in the system. Bugs that have got to be worked out. And they give you an opportunity to upgrade to the latest version. <laughs> yes. Sometimes God has got to send us an upgrade invitation. Because our categories are too rigid. 
We're hardliners where we draw our lines in the sand and dare somebody to have the unmitigating goal to cross it. Where we think that we become so advanced and so well versed in the tradition that we become the tradition ourselves rather than serving the purposes for which the tradition came into being. And Jesus had to correct them before they took on the kind of disposition of the critics of his ministry. He says, neither the parents nor this man, but this is for the glory of God. Do you still believe that God gets glory out of making things straight? Do you still believe that God gets honor out of bringing truth in the midst of lies? Do you still believe that God is glorified when those who are downtrodden are lifted up? When those who are out are brought in? When those who are hopeless are restored? I still believe it. I still believe God is in that kind of business. And Acts chapter 3 is a perfect example of God taking notice of our pain and our sorrow and our suffering even at the point of worship. You ought not, you ought not take for granted, beloved, the, the kinds of things that cross the threshold of the holy on the Lord's day. I know you come to present your best self and you look good. <laughs> Let me go on and tell you right now. I mean, nobody can compare to the, the beautiful way you look right now. But you know, uh, the truth is what you could doll up and cover up and make up and yeah, all that kind of stuff and suit up and tie up. At some point, you have to take those things off. And have to live with what's under the surface. And before Peter and John go into the temple, they stop long enough at the gate beautiful to see the pain and the suffering and the sorrow that's right there at the threshold. Yes, you may not have been brought here, but you've been carrying something here. You brought something from last week unresolved and you were so eager for problems you were borrowed from next week's agenda in order to worry about what has not yet happened and what may not materialize. I mean, you have no shortage of issues that you could complain about. If someone gives you a good minute, you could enumerate and articulate with specificity what your issues are. You could write what the thesis of your discontent is. You could spell it out. You could give us the sub-theses and all the sub-headings and the sub-points because they become so ingrained in your nature. They become so common and consistent in your speech that you can't even respond to a simple question without letting us know what's troubling you. But you did the right thing, beloved. You didn't leave your problems at home. You brought it to the church house. And if there's any place that you ought to bring it to, you ought to bring it to the church house. Now, I need some, I need some mature saints now. I need some mature saints in the house. Let me poll the audience. Everybody wants to be young, but nigga, guess what? At some point, we're all going to get old. That's right. Amen. 
And the only way to avoid getting old, they tell me, is to die young. It's inevitable. But I need some mature saints. I ain't just talking about old folks. I'm talking about mature folks who've been walking with the Lord for a while. I mean, you ain't no Johnny come lately. You've been on the battlefield for a minute and you have seen enough over your life to know the ability of God to craft deliverance when everyone else thought it to be impossible. If that's you, why don't you wave your hands for me real quickly? Go on, wave at me, yeah. And if it's you and you are not ashamed about it, that's right. If you're not ashamed about it, let your neighbor know, yeah, I, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> Yeah, you, you brought some problem of your professional life. People trying to block your advancement. Trying to write you up in such a way that will not afford you opportunity to grow beyond their poor estimation about your potential. And you turned it over to the Lord. And without your knowing, your supervisor got transferred to another department. <laughs> Come on, testify. <laughs> and God opened that door. Some of you have brought before the Lord some brokenness of a family relationship. A situation that you declared you would not take up again. You had done all you could. And it would not bother you one bit if you never saw cousin mm -hmm, at the family reunion again. You know. You're right. I am. And somewhere between your trying to remember the issue that caused you to fall out in the first place. The Lord melted your heart, infused you with some compassion, and you acknowledged everybody plays the fool sometime. And the Lord reconciled. And if he hasn't done it yet, keep praying. He's a God of reconciliation. If it hasn't happened yet, keep praying, keep believing, keep holding hope. It ain't over until the Lord says it's over. And you brought it to the Lord. And there this man is. And he's well, well practiced and asking for some money. He just wants a handout. He just wants some compassion, some act of charity. He wants what you could spare. He wants what he's requested. And Peter and John, look at verse 4. See him. But they see him differently than the other people have seen him walking into the temple. Verse 4 says, Peter looks at him intently and so does John now, now you got to remember in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus makes his debut 
in the synagogue of Nazareth reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who are captive to, ex to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord he rolls up the scroll gives it back to the attendant and he takes his seat and the text says and all the eyes of the people in the synagogue that day were fastened upon him they, 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 they got happy because Jesus was a local boy done good and they thought that they could contain the glory and the splendor of his ministry within their own confines. How they looked at Jesus that day, this man looks at Peter. But he looks at Peter with the invitation that Peter gives to look at us. Here it is. You and I, ought to invite the gaze of the world upon the witness of the church. But it's only after we've looked at the world and assessed the world's needs. Can, can, I, can I say it again? You and I, witnesses of the Christ, are called and compelled to invite the gaze of the world upon the witness of our Christ. But that's only after we've assessed the needs of the world. Now I know in this day and age, evangelism is not a major thrust of our churches. We swap members. We go fishing in other folks' palms trying to catch the fish that's already been caught because we don't want to deal with the fish that has not yet tasted the bait of the master we don't want to put our lines in the waters we don't want to have to deal with those who have not been in church 30 plus years we don't want to have to teach anybody how to find Genesis and Revelations and all the books in between. We don't want to have to labor with somebody who has not yet learned how to pray. Lord, I come to you, knee bent, body bowed, head toward yonder sun, don't need you for one thing, need you for another. We don't want to deal with those kinds of folks. But the power of the gospel is not in going over to greater Hebrew and trying to find who's disaffected over there. But it's in about going across to Mount Vernon and finding those who have not yet said yes to Jesus. Oh, 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 oh I'm in the book, y'all. I'm in the book. He sees him and assesses his need and says, look at us. Now, can I tell you, don't call for their attention if you have nothing to offer. Don't open the doors of the church if you're going to be closed-minded about who God sends. Don't try and pretend to be loving unless you've got enough capacity to go with people through the full process of their deliverance because it may not be suddenly it may take a long time oh I came to preach today you've got to assess the needs fully assess your capacity to respond and because Peter and John have been walking with Jesus a while. Yes, because they now have power. Yeah, power. They got power. They have power. Let the church say power. They don't just have any kind of power. They got Holy Ghost power. Yes, say Holy Ghost power. 
Baptist folk need Holy Ghost power too. Hold the music just a minute. Let me teach this. It ain't just for the Pentecostals. It ain't just for the apostolics. It ain't just for the sanctified crowd. It's for everybody. Anybody who's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you need power. Because the enemy ain't playing with the saints. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But you need some power to wage war against the enemy. He comes against your family. He comes against your hope. He comes against your joy. He comes against your promise. He comes against your witness. And you need power to stand against the evil one. Gave them power. That power got infused in them. And it was power not just to make them talk in other languages. It was power to make them see. To see with brokenness. To see with empathy. To see with grace. To see like Jesus sees. It's, it's the ability to look into the pain of another as though you were looking in a mirror. Because the truth is, our healing comes in healing others. Yeah, yeah. I've never known somebody who's given themselves in the service of others. Not to find some joy, some contentment, and some purpose. Oh no. They find their rhythm when they are aiding others to come into the fullness that God has created them. I know I'm keeping you too long. I'm going to take my seat after a while. But he says, look at us. I know what you want. You want some coins. Those coins bear the image of the Caesar. I know what you love. I know how you've been conditioned. But I don't want to give you what you requested because what you requested is what you want but it's not necessarily what you need and that's the graciousness of God he's gracious enough to hear the request of our wants and to give us a response of our need amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty I do not know just why he came to love me so but he looked beyond my faults and saw my need oh praise his name and Peter said to this man look look at us silver Gold, I do not have. But here's what I'm going to give you. Something that's eternal. Something that's lasting. Something that's enduring. Something that's transformative. Something that will restore, that will re rehabilitate, and something that will give you a future. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth get up and walk now now you 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 can't activate that name just by speaking it you've got to activate that name by the power that comes therefrom and because Peter not only knew the name but he knew the man he could speak with some confidence. Oh, praise his name. How did we get over? Jesus. How did we survive? Jesus. How were we sustained? Jesus. How are we given hope? Jesus. No, I need you to call the name. Because in too many churches, we have opted for 
pronouns to be nebulous about naming him. But on the Lord's day, you ought to call him by his name. I mean, if you're going to come to his house, you ought to call him by his name. If you're going to breathe his air, you ought to call him by his name. If you're going to count his blessings, you ought to call his name. If you're going to testify on his behalf so that others will not be confused about his name, you ought to call his name. Light in darkness, strong tower, way maker, promise keeper, bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty, bridge over troubled water, a friend that stick it closer than a brother, a mother when I'm motherless, father when I'm fatherless. Can I go old school this morning? Doctor in a sick room. Lawyer in a courtroom. Yes, his name is Jesus. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lily of the valley. Bright and morning star. Burden bearer. Heavy load sharer. Joy. Hope. Peace, contentment, center of my joy, action of days. Jesus, do you know his name? Have you tried him? Have you tried him? Do you know him in the name of Jesus? Rise and walk. And you know what happened? He got up and he walked. Not only did he walk, he started leaping and praising and shouting for joy. Now you and I don't get excited because you walked into this place on your own strength. But for somebody who needed God, to get them over the finish line for somebody for whom the last seven days have been a struggle for somebody who's endured the long night of the soul the fact that you got to the Lord's house is already something to shout about and the fact that the Lord speaks to your soul is something to shout about. Can I get one witness who is glad today that the Lord did not leave you by the gate alone in your sorrow. The Lord did not leave you by the gate in your pain the Lord did not leave you by the gate in your affliction but you heard the voice of Jesus saying come 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 unto me and rest Lie down, thy weary one. Lie down, thy head upon my breast. And you know what you did. You came, you came to Jesus as you were weary, worn and sad. But you found in him, but you found in him, but you found in him. I didn't mean to go this far, but my soul, but my soul, but my soul, but my soul done messed around and got happy in here 
and he was leaping for joy and there were some Sadidi folks in the temple that day saying this man is disrupting the decorum of our worship this man is too loud this man is too uncouth but if the Lord has done it for you don't mind who's around you testify if it had not if it had not if it had not I said if it had not been for the Lord on my side I'm gonna quit <laughs> if it had not <laughs> been for his grace I said if it had not been for his mercy I said if it had not oh yes oh yes oh yes if it had not yeah yeah I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so glad he got me up
stand together for the invitation for one who like this man identified by his condition needs an intervention of the Christ and because Peter and John are operating in the power of that the Holy Spirit gives them to be witnesses on behalf of Jesus. They could help and facilitate this man to bring him to the point of his healing. If you're here and in this moment you sense the need to surrender not just to the name but to the power and lordship of Jesus to make him the savior and the master of your life. Come. You're here. A follower of the lamb, but you don't have a church home place where the Lord can speak to you regularly and consistently. Come. Whatever your issue is, you can be a part of the family of God even now. You don't have to do it by yourself. You don't have to wait another day. You don't have to wait until it all falls into place. You just need to surrender to him. Give him your life. Even now, I want the, the brotherhood to sing it softly. The Lord's moving upon your heart. Don't rationalize why you ought to stay away. If he's tugging on your heart, surrender. In this moment, give him your life. 
trust him with your every moment. Yeah. There's room for you. Even now. The prayer warriors pray even now for those who are at the point of decision making. If you want someone to walk with you, you don't have to walk alone. You can slip your hand up and somebody will come and they'll walk with you. Pray for them. They're at the point of decision making. Yeah. There's room, there's room, plenty good room, plenty good room. Plenty good room, yeah. sitting next, standing next to someone you don't know, be courageous in the spirit now to ask them, is that you? Do you? Do you need to go? And if they say yes, tell them I'll walk with you. Yeah. It's not the will of God that any should perish, any should be outside the ark of safety or that we should be Christian unto ourselves. We're supposed to do it in community, one with another. You need a church home. Bedside Baptist is not a real church. It ain't a real church. You need, you need a church home. Yeah. A real pastor. <laughs> Thanks be to God. We welcome today into the family of God at First Baptist, uh, Gail and Audrey, Gail, Drake, and Audrey Black, who have come based upon their discipleship experience. They come from Pittsburgh, Georgia, California. All right. The First Baptist Church of Pittsburgh, California. Amen. Amen. They, they, they wanted to be second to no one, so they came to a First Baptist from a First Baptist. <laughs> and they've been, they've been worshiping with us for several months, y'all. And, and they've been coming to Bible study.
for several months. Um, that's how God can do it. I, w I want you to hear, hear what I said in the sermon. Our invitation is for people to look at our witness. And if our witness is compelling, then our words will match it. And I'm thankful that God has moved upon the hearts of these sisters to come and share with us here at First Baptist. Amen. And Brother Datris Cobb said he wants to be more than just a member of the staff. He wants to be a disciple of this congregation. So we welcome him comes to us from the Collins Chapel Christian Methodist Episcopal Church in Memphis where he served there and he is with us and we want to thank God for him. Amen. And we pray we pray for Mr. Warren Delaney father of the late Janet Slaughter who who over these years lost both a wife and a daughter Thank you, Thank and who's still trusting in the Lord. I need, I need some, I need some senior saints. I need some senior saints to come, come right now. Some senior saints to come and stand with Brother Delaney. Come on, I need some senior saints who've been on the battlefield alone. Bonnie Shade, come on. Uh, yeah to surround him as we pray for him. Sometimes we think that because you hit a certain age, the devil leaves you alone. Sometimes you think because you're settled. You know, you've got good rhythm that there are some things you'll never face again. But even people in their fourth quarters need to learn how to manage life carefully. Don't come all this way to miss the kingdom's goal. So don't be on the battlefield all your life and, and then in the last you stagger. So we pray for Mr. Delaney that oh God every grace that he needs that you would supply every strength every hope every comfort that you would build him up in faith and remind him of the hope that you promised and even in these days where the memories of a beloved wife and a dutiful daughter will crowd his mental space. Remind him how blessed he has been. How you favored him in abundance. And that your promises are yea and amen. He is not done. You are not out of supply. As you have done it of old, you can do it anew. And for anyone who sits, oh God, under the sound of my voice and they are struggling to find their footing even in their seasoned and senior years, God gird them up now. Brace them and steady their step. 
call them to the path that they might finish strong for the praise of your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God say amen. amen. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. Yeah. Listen, this, this Nick Slaughter is a, is a good Christian gentleman who brought his father-in-law to worship today. Uh, yeah. He brought his, his father-in-law to worship. And he's been a, a stand-up brother as a caretaker keeping faithful to the memory of his wife departed. And he does, he does for his father-in-law what Christian duty requires. It's, it's likened, it's likened to, it's likened to Ruth and Naomi and I know, I know we, we read that story and it's women involved and so we don't think that men could be as devoted and as tender and as caring and as loving. Um, but just to see him bring Mr. Delaney up this morning is a testament of the grace of God that binds this family. And it tells us what shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Not even death. God be praised. God be praised. God be praised. God be praised. When God gives us these kinds of precious moments of ministry, we take them seriously because it is an expression of God's care for all of us. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, stand as we prepare to leave. God has spoken. Let the church amen. say amen. 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 Senior ushers, thank you for your service unto the Lord. Uh, if if y'all do me a favor, one, one, one quick second, let everyone just take a seat and let only the senior ushers stand. I just, I want to give them this moment of commendation and tribute. Thank you. Thank you for being so dutiful in your service to God. May God continue to strengthen you and keep you and uphold you, inspire you, and keep those beautiful smiles on your face. Amen. Um, if you're an intermediate usher and you want to join the senior ushers, you could. They'll. Amen. Amen. Amen.
God be praised. Come on, let's celebrate them once more. Amen. Come on, let's stand as we prepare to leave. Let the church say amen. Amen. Come on, play that. Let the church say amen. Let the church God has spoken. Let the church, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God, let the church say amen. Listen, um, last Sunday, I invited members to the table to symbolize God's open table, a table for all where no one who has been claimed by his blood can be excluded. And for some, it was jarring. I want to acknowledge that. I want to share with you the intent God invites us all to participate in the full being of God. Amen. And so for those who were jarred by it and those who may have carried some offense from it, you can pardon me. You know. Amen. Amen. The table of the Lord is open to us all. And the more we open it, the more we come to discover the extraordinary wonder that he leaves a place there for us. Yeah. So, beloved, go now into the world to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ so that those to whom he is a stranger will know in him there's a Savior who redeems unto eternal life. May God himself, the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant has brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you to do what pleases him. May he preserve your whole soul, your body, your spirit blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who promised is faithful. He is faithful. And because no words are wasted from his lips, he will do it. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen.